Okay, well, today I'm going to talk to you guys about um, sugar, sweets in general, um, sugar addiction, and what uh, withdrawals from sugar can look like, and um, let me see. Um, and then sweetening alternatives as well. I found a really great resource on um, like sweetener, alternative sweeteners, um, like sucrose and things like that. And um, I'll have to show that to you guys. Sorry, I didn't have my life together before I opened all this. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna let my dog in so they'll stop barking. Um, did you guys survive Halloween? Was that rough, um, having all the extra candy in the house? Candy, you've got little ones. Do they get to go trick-or-treating? I might, yeah, have had a Reese's, I might have had a Reese's peanut butter cup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's better yeah. than a bag of them, like usual. <laughs> Yeah. I did. I did better this year than I have done in the past. That's for sure. Okay. Good. Yeah. I was able to resist the the candy at the front desk at the charts desk. So. Luckily, yes, and I I didn't even see it that time. So, and I actually picked up a candy bar out of Jet's room and put it up. And I did. Normally, I would pick it up and eat it, and I I put it up. <laughs> oh, good. Awesome. So. Well. Um, most people don't know that they're addicted to sugar, so they can be, uh, it's, sometimes people are surprised when they realize how much sugar is in the foods that they eat and the drinks that they um, drink on a regular basis. So I'm going to share with you guys some shocking sugar facts. Um, sugar is eight times more addicting than cocaine. Once it's consumed, it hits the same trigger points in the brain that make you want, to, want more, and that's why you crave sugar. Um, there are four grams of sugar equal to one teaspoon. And when you look at a regular 12 ounce soda, like a, a Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper, one of those things, um, it is um, on average, there's gonna be 64 grams of sugar in a 12 ounce regular soda. So that's 16 teaspoons. That's over a quarter of a cup of sugar. So when you think about like when you're when you've made a cake because you have flour in the house, <laughs> um, <laughs> how much sugar you put into that cake, you know, put that into perspective of like drinking one soda. Um, so according to the American Heart Association, it's recommended that women consume no more than six teaspoons of sugar, added sugar per day, um, and that's going to be 25 grams of sugar. And men should consume no more than nine grams. So that's gonna be 36, I mean, nine teaspoons. That's gonna be 36 grams of sugar per day. Um, so we talked about, um, last week I talked to you guys about all the different macros and micronutrients. And so sugar, of course, falls into the macronutrient of um, carbs. And the way that carbs are broken down there are um, different types of sugars. So you've got glucose, that is gonna be the main source of fuel for your brain. And that's what every um, cell in your body is able to met metabolize glucose. But fructose is metabolized only by your liver. So when you think about sugar substitutes, like for example, agave, 
you know, that's one that's come out and people say, oh, agave is a, a great sugar substitute because it's sweet, but it doesn't add to your calories. Well, it is 70 to 90% fructose. So that means that only 10 to 30% of it is fructose. I mean, sorry, glucose. Only um, that means it is primarily broken down by your liver. So the metabolic tax that you get from um, taking in agave can be just as devastating as having maybe a smaller volume of actual sugar. So I want to show you guys a resource that I found. Um, and here it is. Okay, so this is um, from the FDA website. Um, and this is going to show you um, all of the different alternative sugar source, like sweeteners that are available, um, that are approved by the FDA to be used in our food. So you can go through this list and you can kind of see um, like what are the different um, uh, brand names that these things come up as, like saccharin, it comes up as sweet and low. Um, aspartame is um, equal, and acesulfame potassium, or ACE-K, um, is going to come up as sweet one. So I know that I've seen these, like, other versions of these whenever you go to, um, I think the only sit-down restaurant we go to ever is, uh, used to be Olive Garden. And they have those little sticks of like the blue, the pink, and the yellow. So those are those three. Um, sucralose is going to be Splenda. Um, and so these are sugar alternatives. Um, but when you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see how much sweeter these different sugars are. So um, acesulfame potassium is 200 times sweeter than actual table sugar. So the amount that is um, recommended by the FDA that you take in a max of is gonna be 15 milligrams per kilo of body weight. Um, and then same thing for aspartame, 200 times sweeter, don't take in more than 50. Um, saccharin, like all of the uh, Splenda is 600 times sweeter than sugar. So the, the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because um, although it seems like a, like a safe alternative for us to take in those um, sweeteners, you know, something that says it's sugar-free, um, like I know that a lot of the um, like pre-workout or like post-workout drinks like, or Red Bull, stuff like that, um, the sugar-free, they have those sweetener alternatives in them, um, but they are broken down by the liver. So they are not as well um, metabolized in the body. They can be just as toxic. So studies show that a high consumption of sugar is associated with inflammation and many chronic diseases. So you can see kind of on this list, all the different chronic diseases, all of the cells in our body, including cancer cells, need sugar for energy, glucose for energy. So um, diseases that are directly linked to your sugar intake are gonna be diabetes, esophagus and stomach cancers, both are associated with the amount of sugar that you take in. Obesity is strongly correlated with sugar consumption and it can account for at least 13 types of cancer, including breast, liver, and colon cancer as well. Um, so reading food labels is gonna be one of the best ways that you can monitor how much sugar you're taking in, but it can be disguised as many other different things. So um, high fructose corn syrup is gonna be another form of sugar on your labels. Um, molasses, fruit juice concentrates as well. When we're addicted to sugar and we stop having it, then you can actually experience withdrawals. So symptoms of withdrawals are gonna be headaches, anxiety, fatigue, muscle pain. Sugar, um, one of the, the quotes 
that I've heard um, recently. John, can you admit, Missy? I don't know how to find No, uh, let me check and see if she's in. Yeah, she's in. Yeah, there she is. I'll admit her. She's in. She's coming in. Awesome. Thanks. Um, so one of the quotes that I um, heard when I was preparing for this, um, this talk is that sugar is the alcohol of the child. So that impacts me thinking about um, sugar, when it's taken in, it actually can cause chronic disease. And the way that it's metabolized is gonna be limited. You know, you can't metabolize all of it. Some of it is going to be, going to be stored as a fatty infiltration of the liver. So there are children that have childhood obesity who actually have fatty liver disease, like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because of the amount of sugar that they take in. So it's good when we are able to eliminate that as well. Um, so now we're going to look at some um, nutritional facts. So you, it's important for you to know what is in your food. Um, you can do this by learning how to read nutrition fact labels. So you want to look at the, um, the sugar content, content of products that you're taking in. Natural sources of sugar, such as milk and fruit, um, are going to be included in the amount of sugar, like the total sugars. Um, but there's also added sugar. So the American Heart Association recommends that you have no more than 25 grams of added sugar per day for women and no more than 36 grams of added sugar per day for men. The new nutrition fact labels make it really easy for us to identify how much sugar is actually natural and how much is added because it is a packaged food. So once you start looking, um, you'll be pretty surprised. I, um, you know, fun may, like fun uh, thing that you can do with your kids is say, let's all look, let's just look through what we have in the cabinet and see, let's find out how much sugar is in everything. And it's pretty surprising to look at things. Um, when you look at the ingredients label, they are, um, the ingredients list is actually gonna be in order of like how high the content is of that um, ingredient in the list. So it's like in um, how, however much abundance, like if you're making, um, a recipe, it would be the largest ingredient would be at the top. So you want to be mindful about what you consume, read the nutrition, fat labels, limit your um, sugar in your daily consumption. Um, and I challenge you to look through your cabinets and find how much hidden sugar you didn't know that was in your life. Um, Missy, do you need to jump in here and um, talk about your part? If you want to jump in, just let me know. Um, so we're going to talk about foods that can be sneaky. Sugar can sometimes be sneaky. Um, it can be hidden in lots of different types of foods without you being aware of it. So the three most common foods that have hidden sugar um, are going to be convenience foods for breakfast. So oatmeal packets, Pop-Tarts, yogurt, cereal. A single serving oatmeal packet is going to be 11 to 15 grams of sugar per packet. And the sugar is going to be the second ingredient on the list. Pop tarts, one package has two pastries. It contains 30 grams of sugar, 29 grams of which is added sugar. Trix cotton candy yogurt is um, 14 grams of sugar per serving. And um, lots of different popular breakfast cereals um, are an average of 10 grams for three quarters of a cup. And who actually takes a cup and measures out how much cereal they're going to be putting in their bowl? Um, so another hidden source is going to be protein bars. Um, this, this one here is 19.5 grams of sugar compared to... Um, putting it in perspective, a Krispy Kreme donut has 12.6 grams of sugar. Um, and then flavored uh, creamers 
on average, you're going to have about six grams of sugar per tablespoon. That can add really quickly when you just kind of glug glug, make it the right color, <laughs> and then drink your coffee. Did you want to jump in, Missy? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. And I also apologize, we're getting our roof. Oh. Uh, so there's all kinds of things going on. Um, there's lots of banging happening in my world. So, um, so I guess the only thing um, I don't have you talked about Minji's at all. We have not yet. Um, okay. Can you go through kind of the fun facts that you sent to me? Yeah. So um, for those of you who don't know, Minji's. Um, we uh, we make we're a large enough organization so that uh, there's over 500 stores in the United States and over 100 in Canada, um, and then we're in several foreign countries. So it's a pretty it's a larger organization I think than most people are aware. And um, we control our yogurt from I always say from cow to consumer. Um, we have a dairy in. Uh, California, <clears throat> where our cows are, um, you know, we monitor them. They're they're free to roam. We call them Happy California cows. Um, and but what we we are kind of anti um, Monsanto. Um, we give we don't give our cows hormones to produce milk. Uh, they produce their milk naturally. Um, the way God made them to produce it. And uh, anyway, so we control the whole process. We make our yogurt, we make our own yogurt, and we make it for Minchie's franchises. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know kind of really the difference between yogurt and ice cream, ice cream is purely a dessert. And I, I mean, I'm, I, Ice cream has always, I, I love ice cream, so nothing, I don't want to say anything bad about them. Just the difference between yogurt and ice cream is that ice cream really is a dessert. Yogurt has um, probiotics um, in it, which is, y'all know what probiotics are. Um, and it's about half the calories of ice cream. So um, we have, Minchie's has the highest um certification possible from the National Yogurt Association in the US. Um, and uh, so anyway, we also, uh, we try to make it as, I'm not gonna sit here and declare that every single one of our yogurts is, um, you know, is, is uh, not, we have like cookies and cream yogurt, we have cake batter, we have those things too, but, uh, again, we do have the lower calories. We do have the probiotics in our our yogurt, and we always carry uh, low fat, non fat, um, low carb. We always have a low carb, and then we always have a non dairy, uh, like a sorbet of some sort. Um, we put the calories right on the labels, um, just so you know what you're getting and whether it what kind of fat it is. We actually even have some full fat um, yogurts. Um, anyway, um, so that's that's really the gist of it. Um, and of course you can get as little or as much as you want uh, because it's all self-serve. And um, yeah, we just try to, um, we try to make it as clean as possible. We even try to stay away from like artificial dyes and things like that. So um, like on our strawberry, if we need a little bit more pink, we go to beet juice as opposed to artificial coloring. So um, just so you know that, um, Anything else? Any other questions? <laughs> favorite flavor. What's my favorite flavor? Yeah. Uh, well, my favorite flavor is coffee, is uh, the cold brew. 
Um, but I'm a like that. I'm a I am a coffee aholic. Um, we put the real um, ingredients in, in all of our yogurts, actually. So if it says cake batter, it actually has cake batter. On cookies and cream, we actually put real cookies. And so therefore, in the coffee uh, yogurt, we actually put real coffee and there is caffeine. There would be caffeine in that. So just so you know that okay. kind of helps make your decision for you, especially if you're gluten intolerant or, you know, anything like that. The, 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 um, the, the name of the yogurt kind of tells you what's in it. Okay. Yeah, me and, me and the boys and Yvonne have been going to Minchie's for, I, I mean, ever since y'all really got established in Lubbock and we really enjoyed it. My, the danger part for me is, is, is the toppings after I get the yogurt. Right. But, uh, but the yogurt itself, I really like it. You know, there's, not, you know, there's no added sugar versions and there's, uh, you know, of course, the gluten-free stuff. I mean, it's all, everything, like if you're going to get, if you have a choice between ice cream or Menchie's, I, I just, Menchie's has been great for us, so. Yeah. I think that's I, you know, I try to I try to stick with the, of course, I'm not allergic to, I don't have allergies, but I, on the toppings, I like to stick with the nuts because that'll fill me up more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have pecan, you know, we have all the, we have almonds, pecans, walnuts, and um, so anyway, if you don't have any allergies, those are good toppings to, to put on your yogurt. Awesome. 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 Yeah. All right. Kim, what, do y'all have any questions for Missy about Minchie's? No. No, ma'am. We, we love it. I agree with the cold brew. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it too. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we went for my, um, my birthday last year, right? It is the group. Yeah. 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 So, that was fun. All right. I think the cold brew is the best flavor. That was really awesome. I'm really excited about that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you for your time missy yeah sure i'm sorry i was late on technology uh, okay. <laughs> not savvy <laughs> all right <laughs> all right all right thanks for coming missy uh -huh. thanks for inviting me all right bye all right i'm gonna go back a couple slides all right um so we talked about um, coffee creamer. So um, that's one that is, is a shocker. That's like six grams of sugar per tablespoon, especially when you're not measuring how much coffee you're putting or how much creamer you're putting in your or coffee into your creamer. <laughs> I bet Dunkin' Donuts put some sugar in their creamer, which is really going to make me mad, but anyway. Yeah, I think so. Um, so, there are um, lots of different names for sugar, and while some are marketed as being healthier, um, they, can, they all contain glucose, which causes an inflammatory response within your body. So, um, for example, honey, Maple syrup, agave, all contain grams of sugar. Um, so alternatives, besides that list that I showed you guys on um, the FDA's website, other alternatives are, are gonna be different ways that you can add um, flavor to your food uh, without necessarily adding um, the carbs, adding the sugar, um, for example, you can add cinnamon. It's going to add, going to hit the same uh, taste buds without adding any grams of sugar. Um, you can add to your protein pancakes, to your muffin, add cinnamon to your coffee. It's pretty good. Um, we've also got the option of shredded coconut. It's going to be, um, as long as you're purchasing the one that's unsweetened, um, it's going to be great to add to like, um, protein energy balls that you make or to sprinkle on your oatmeal. Um, it's also going to add a little bit of fat as well. 
And then another alternative is going to be fruit, um, fruit puree. No sugar added. It's going to help add, um, uh, make your baked goods a little bit more moist as well. So I've got a few um, healthy treats. So one of those is going to be Menchie's. Um, that's why we invited them for this week to be the sponsor. Um, and we're working on hopefully getting a, a gift card for next week to be the giveaway. Here in just a minute, I'll do the giveaway for um, the Humbly Fed um, five meals gift certificate that we have here. Uh, I've got everybody's name printed out. Um, and then uh, other healthy treats. Fresh or frozen or dehydrated fruit are going to be good as long as there are no sugar added um, options. Peanut butter and banana nice cream is going to be good. Um, adding uh, low sugar Greek yogurt with chocolate chips is a good option or adding granola to that as long as it's not granola that was made with added sugar. Roasted nuts with cinnamon and cayenne pepper sounds great. Um, and homemade smoothies are good. Um, commercial smoothies can be really loaded down with sugar. Um, one of our participants sent me a message this week asking me about um, a pre-made um, smoothie that uh, was purchased at the grocery store saying, hey, is this a good alternative for me for um, this evening? And they can be deceiving because when you look at um, those smoothies in a bottle, yes, it's green, but that doesn't mean that it was made with spinach or anything like that. You look at the ingredients list and you can see that it was all different types of fruits or maybe it had some added sugars to it. So I was able to talk with that um, participant about like how to make it fit with the day, but um, not necessarily making that an entire meal. Um, so other options that we have, I'm going to take you guys over to our website real quick. Um, our website, John's website. Hang on. While you're getting it pulled up, uh, we, uh, I found out through a friend that the Tropical Smoothie Cafe, all of their smoothies are not smoothies. They're like just made from powder and definitely loaded with sugar. They don't they don't blend up any vegetables or anything in the store. That's disappointing. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. So fun fact, if you guys get on um, CrossFit Their Own website, um, there's this little pop-up that comes up, download five tips for navigating a healthy holiday. And it's not going to be exactly the same information that I'm going to talk about during the um, navigating a healthy holiday talk that I'm going to do later on this month. Um, but there's a fun little five page ebook. It's got some good information in there. Um, but on uh, CrossFit Thrones website, we have our recipes. So some good um, recipes that we have here. Um, there is chocolate chip protein cookies, um, casein pudding, dark chocolate avocado truffles. I have not, I don't think that'd be for me, but um, <laughs> mini baked apple crumble and then protein packed cookie bite, cookie dough um, bites. So for me, um, casein pudding was a little bit like I wasn't a bit, super big fan of the texture of casein pudding, um, but I like to do casein um, mixed with peanut butter and a little bit of no sugar added almond milk. And I make it into like a dough, like a cookie dough consistency, and then just put it in my waffle maker. And that's what I have for my bedtime mm. with, um, with frozen fruit usually. Like I'll make my waffle and when it's still warm, I'll set the frozen fruit on top of it and then go take a shower and come out and it's perfect. So, but these are some good, um, good recipes. It takes you to HSN's website where you've got wonderful pictures of the recipe. Um, but I showed this to you guys last time when you go to the website, you can go in here and say, well, I only want to make five cookies and you can change the number of servings and it changes the recipe for you. So you don't have to do the math yourself or you can make 40 cookies. So 
Um, back to my brain. So those are some good healthy treat alternatives. Um, the information that Missy had sent to me, I think she mentioned most of this already. Um, yogurt has pro probiotics and about half the calories of ice cream. At Menchie's, they never use high fructose corn syrup and they try to stay away from artificial food coloring. They control their products from cow to consumer. So they actually have a dairy in California with happy cows and um, they are free to roam. They're never given hormones to produce milk and their yogurt is made by Menchie's or Menchie's franchises. They offer low fat, fat free, low carb and no sugar added options. And there's always at least one option that is milk free. Okay, well, this one was a little bit shorter than the last one. Um, what questions do you guys have for me? Anything? Hey, Heather, I still haven't done my form from last week. Is that in an email or where, where could one find that form? <laughs> that is a great question. Um, I, I posted the link to it in the chat on, um, on the app, but also if you open up that folder that we gave you, on the left-hand side, you're going to have a page that has a QR code on it. Um, and then it also has like, um, there you go. That's it. And it has at the oh. bottom our sponsors. Okay. Awesome. Cool. All right. So I had six people fill out their form. One of them was John. So John is going to be Yvonne. You, <laughs> you don't get the, the gift card. <laughs> okay. That awesome, even though it worked harder than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I picked the name. Let's see who it is. Let's see. Can you all see? It's Kim. Hey. Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay, Kim, that's, this is for you. So this is the Yay. five meals from Humbly Fed. Um, and they put the date that they printed it, but they did not put like a, an expiration date. So they said that it can be for just whenever you want it to be. Okay. Um, and you go on to their website and you just look at the menu for the week and you pick what meals that you want. And then you, um, submit your order. They said that just put in, um, it's like a Google form and you okay. fill it out and put in which meals that you want and then the payment, if you choose to do more than five meals, the payment is always done whenever you go and pick up your food from them. Okay, cool. Thank you guys. Yes, so exciting. So John, do you want to talk about this week? Sounds like you did work hard. You are not using an app to tell you what to eat. Has that been <laughs> difficult? I'm just learning how to eat again. Yeah. Um, and that feels weird. It's like to be almost half a century old and not know how to eat. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. But you do know, because you've, you've been consuming the food that are <laughs> Consuming is not a problem, Heather. Yes, but you also <laughs> looked at the food as you prepared it. Yeah, I think I, it's kind of cool, because I, I, mean, I learned a little bit about the process, and portioning over you know working from the app for a while helped me with the portioning but I think I probably could have done the portioning without the app even if I'd paid attention enough but anyway here I'm on the other side of it and doing okay so right. it's been interesting I don't know I I like not having like you know I'm a I'm the guy that looks at his phone and if I see a red dot on my email or whatever on my phone I try and kill all those red dots I don't like yeah. alerts so um it's nice to not have an extra red dot to manage that's good. every time I need to eat. Yeah, that's good. Kim, do you have any comments on adding veggies to your life? Um, no, I mean, it's been, 
it's been better. I mean, I just, I have to um, just as far as picking veggies that I like, um, I feel like I end up just eating the same thing over and over. So hopefully that doesn't get monotonous, you know, like just carrots. Well, and I've been eating spinach, which I need to try to figure out how to like cook the spinach. You were saying like put it in eggs and stuff. Um, and it's hard because I mean, for the most part, I'm the only one eating the veggies. So I haven't convinced my guys that eating veggies is a good idea. Yeah. So, um, m mostly I'm just making the extra veggies for myself. Hmm. So, and then you have leftovers for the next meal if you need them. Yes. But so mostly I feel like I've been eating raw vegetables, which I know is not wrong, but I need to do more experimenting, I guess, with cooking them. Yeah. Awesome. So, but it's been okay. Good. I'm not dead from eating vegetables yet. Well, good. That's great. <laughs> Yvonne, had this, Yvonne had this brilliant idea last night. We, like, we cooked down a whole bunch of spinach and mixed it with our ground turkey. Mm -hmm. and uh, some goat cheese and made it like stuffed mushrooms nice. yes and so, and so the stuff and then the boys and, and too she snuck in she snuck in the mushroom stems into that mix as well and chopped them up okay and then she was like you know but then so the boys are like i don't want to eat mushrooms and everyone's like okay just eat, eat just set the mushrooms to the side and eat the eat the meat and stuff and they and they did they ate the spinach they ate the ground turkey they ate the goat cheese with the ground up mushrooms in there that they couldn't tell and so they actually yeah. got all the above and they were thinking like oh this is the same stuff we just usually mix with noodles or something and they and they totally ate that so yeah yeah just hide i guess i just need to work on hiding them yeah <laughs> right yes. yeah i think spinach is easier like i tried it once with kale a long time ago kale does not hide well no. it, it's like it just sticks out it, wherever it is. But <laughs> yeah. um, spinach is easier. And I cook spinach most of the time because otherwise it starts to smell weird. And then um, I'm Yeah. <laughs> I ate it like a salad the other day with steak and it was really good like that. But I did have to just use the regular ranch dressing. I haven't gotten away yeah. from that yet. But I think the problem with us is we're very like like a meat source and then a side item. Like we don't really mix our foods together very much like casseroles or anything like that. I mean, my guys are really huh? picky about, about having things touching or mixing or anything. So it's a lot like a separate food item. And so that's mm. impossible to hide, of course, you know, it's just yeah. like, a, so, um, but yeah, I bet, I'm doing okay as far as eating the vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I've been able to do, like Yvonne mentioned, um, cooking spinach, like you can take a bag of like six ounces of spinach and it cooks down to like half a cup. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. nothing. It's like nothing. It's crazy. But what's, what's cool about spinach is that it, it takes on the flavor of whatever you put it with. So, there was, um, when I first started RP, there's a group on Facebook for people that use RP. And the biggest thing on there was spinach lemonade. And so people would take spinach. What? And, yes. Yes. I know it sounds crazy. It's good. <laughs> but you take spinach and you spin it down with, or blend it with water and like a little, you know, pour in packet of lemonade flavor. And it's oh. Because it, what? it does not taste like spinach. But you can also put it in smoothies and stuff, like a protein shake. You yeah. can also blend it in a protein shake, right? Yes. With yes. some fruit. Okay. Like for vanilla. Would you just put it in like a vanilla shake? Yeah, sure. Yeah. But for me, I try to avoid drinking my calories for one. Yeah. Um, just because that's, um, well, I mean, you know, we talked about like when you have um, juice as opposed to um, whole fruit, um, you're going to be missing the fiber, which, I mean, you're not juicing the spinach, so you're not losing the fiber in it, but I try to just not drink my calories. I'd rather have something to chew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, drinking calories means different things in different circles, Heather. I know. I know. <laughs> I had a six pack for lunch, you know, it's not, didn't go. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> 
I've done it. <laughs> it's been a no. few years, but I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What other questions do you guys have for me? Uh, I don't think I have any more. Okay. Do you feel like the um, the app has helped with the reminders? Um, I no. I mean, I yes. I'm checking them off, but it's not um, it's not cueing me. You know, like we were just talking about RP as far as like you know having to check that off or with each meal. Yeah. So I just even I've noticed that I've gone back and clicked the day before, you know, yeah. like, oh, yes, I did that, you know. Yeah, I had right. done that, too. Um, and what else was I going to ask? So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the chat and, like, send y'all a message. On Saturday, I want to do a Zoom meeting like this, not a presentation. I won't be presenting anything, but just a check-in, see if anybody has questions, kind of ask these same fat questions that you guys are mentioning right now um, to make sure that everybody is getting the feedback that they need to feel like they're um, making progress and that this was worth the time and money that you've put in. That I put in too. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anything else? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Well, I will um, get this posted here in a little okay. bit. Okay, hey there. Bye. Thanks, Heather. Bye, guys.